Hello, welcome back to Audit Pop Culture. Today we're going over the ninth episode of Movie Mondays. And we're going to be talking about the Amazon Prime original movie called Coming to America. Um, this is a sequel to Coming to America, which came out in 1988. Um, so it's been a long, long, long time since that, since the first one, which is kind of fun. So, um, when I saw the trailer of it, I was really excited because I loved the first one. So the second one must be decent. Because in my head, I was like, okay, it's gonna, like, this is way too far a distance to have a sequel. At the same time, I think they know this, and I think they're leaning into the direction of being an idea of, like, oh, it's just gonna be a fun sequel for, like, the, just the, just the fans only kind of thing. And it was. It definitely leaned into more just like, if you've seen it, you've seen it. This is not looking to win any type of prizes or anything. This is just for fun. And I felt like that in this whole, throughout the whole thing. Um, to give you a little background with it, it's pretty much, it's about um, an African monarch uh, who's now a king, going by a, a king of king, who goes to America to find his long lost son and bring him back to kind of build a bond with them so he can make him the next king since he doesn't have, since his, the only, uh, what am I thinking? The only kids that he has are, uh, daughters. So he doesn't really have a son to take over the, take over the throne after him. And yeah, so yeah, so he comes back and they do their own thing to kind of get him ready to take the throne. And it's really, really funny. Like, it's, sorry, it's really, really fun. Funny parts are on and off. Like, some parts are fun, some are funny, some parts are just like, ah, I get it, you know. Um, there's a lot of tropes that kind of mirror the first one, pretty much. Um, which is, you would think it's bad, but technically, because it's been so much of a distance, it kind of is more, it kind of hits more of a, like a nostalgic direction. And it also felt like they were leaning into a lot of jokes that were back in the 80s or early 90s where it, where it was that kind of just like oh ba -ba, like uh oh this is happening and here's a side like joke that's not really that's not it's kind of outdated in a way but at the same time because of the idea of that you remembered it from the um from the first movie you think oh okay this is like it's like a nostalgic way i don't know i just felt very nostalgic about the whole time more than anything else I understand it wasn't very, it didn't have as strong points in a lot of places. Like some parts weren't really that funny, but there were a lot of fun moments. And I think that thanks to Black Panther, I feel like it gave it even more of a green light to do this because the outfits were on top of it. Like it was a lot, a lot of updated outfits are really nice. And I love the, um, oh, by the way, my videos are usually spoil alerts. Like, if I don't say, if I say it's not, I'm not gonna spoil it, I'll say that, but your spoil alerts are pretty much always happening. So, spoiler alert for this. Pretty much, there's a top, there's a part where the sun comes, or the lost, lo long lost sun comes to, um, their place, which I didn't write down exactly what it was called, so I, right over the head. Um, so, he comes back to Africa, and he goes to the kingdom, and they're like, here, we're going to train you to be exactly what you need to be for this kingdom. Um, dress like this, do this, do this, do this. And he does look really, really great. And he looks exactly like they want them to look, him look like. But then, like, he has to, he has his um, I was gonna say, uh, hairstylist who's like, you know, because he's like, I'm not comfortable with being all this stuff. I feel like I don't deserve this. And I don't feel like it's me. She's like, just make it you then, you know, just make it who you want to be. And he's like, you know, I will. So he mixes the Brooklyn direction mixed with, I think it's Brooklyn. No, sorry. Oh my God. It's Queens. He mixes a Queen style mixed with their style. And which I thought was going to go the other way. I thought he was going to come out and just complete Queen style, but he completely mingled them together. And it's so nice. It gave it a great update. and I loved it. Um, shout out to Eddie Murphy, who was completely doing a great job. He kept it like, this is, this is cakes to him, obviously, but he did a great job. Um, Arnicio did a great job. He, um, who else did a great job? Leslie, Leslie Jones actually did a really good job. Really, really good job. Like, I was very impressed. I don't, I did not care for her. And SNL, I felt like she was reading up. I can see her reading lines. I can see her messing up all the time. And 
they kind of lean into the loud black lady kind of, she really leaned into that direction, so just like, oh my god, thanks for keeping the stereotype keep, like, going, you know, there's more, I know there's more to you than just being, being loud and extremely into who you are, like, into the loud black woman, there's more to that, and I know there's more to her, and I can't wait for more of her doing that, expanding more, now that she can do, actually, that she can actually do her lines, she can actually do really well in a movie, um, so yeah, I thought she was amazing, I thought she was funny, I thought she, every joke hit perfectly, she looked very relaxed, it looked like she was really into it, and I loved it, and it looked like they're all, the whole cast looked like they were having a great time. Um, Wesley Snipes, amazing, love that he's working again, I love that he's doing a great job, and he hasn't lost any type of step, um, he does a great job, he plays this general that's the opposite of the, that's like another part of the kingdom, um, that wants to pretty much marry his, give his daughter up to the long lost son as, so they can, co they can merge together kind of thing. If not, they're going to go to war. And I felt like he did a great job doing that, like playing that character. Um, I love that we got to see, um, James Earl Jones for a lot, like for a little bit. Um, and a shout, big, big, big shout out to, uh, Tiana Taylor. Oh my God, Tiana Taylor killed it, killed it, killed it. Like, she didn't have that much lines, but she had fucking presence. Like, she killed it at every fucking thing. She was a daughter. She was pretty much the daughter that was going to marry, that was supposed to marry the new, uh, the guy, which is, if I can think of it, Lav uh, Lavelle is his name, um, played by Jeremy Fowler, who also, who, uh, who also did a good job, or Jermaine Fowler, who did a great job. He, is very sexy too, and he just did a, he just, it seemed, when I first saw him, I was like, okay, let's see, you're a different character, you're a different actor I've never seen before, and I know he's been doing comedian, or, like, comedy inside, inside the whole little, like, bubble of the comedian world, so I was very excited to see what he was gonna do, and I was like, okay, cool, but he actually did a good job, he did a great job, he looked, he got great presence, I'm very excited to see what else he's gonna do from here, um, I know, he, I know he was part of Jack, uh, Black Jack, or Black Jack, Bojack, um, Horseman, so hopefully that will kick him out of that kind of, like, Volk voice direction and get him more roles like this, since he was one of the center roles. Um, another shout-out to Kiki Le uh, Lane. Killed it. And I see you. I see you. I see you, Kiki. You did a fucking great job, and you just had complete presence. I was hoping throughout the whole time, I was like, please let her be queen, please let her be queen, please let her be queen. Even though I did like um, uh, Lavelle, I did think he was great, and he was the character was a little cocky, but he was doing his best. I definitely was leaning over to uh, Mika. I was like, please, please let her be queen. And she did, thank God. Um, so yeah, so I thought she was doing a great job. Um, back to ta uh, Tanya, or Tiana Taylor. She has this part inside the movie where she is doing, like, the normal trope that they did in the first movie where they presented the princess that's supposed to marry Eddie Murphy's character, Akeem. Um, she was that presenting princess, and they updated that, like, that entry so well to the song of, uh, Get Off by Prince. Oh, she just took the tension. My complete tension's away. I was just watching her, and she's just, like... I can't. Like, I'm, I'm still shook over it, and I just know that she had, and, uh, I can't wait for more. I can't wait for more of her being in more of the spotlight like this. She definitely has it. Um, so yeah, I was really excited with this. I, th I thought it really worked. I thought there wasn't really, so there was a lot of tropes that kind of lean into each other, but all in all, it worked. It, the whole thing worked. The whole, I, the whole look of it was very beautiful. It reminded me a lot of Black Panther, but with their own little directing style. Um, a lot, a lot of A-list people that came into the, pre like, that popped in and popped out, or sang over his things, like, you got Louis Anderson, or Louis Anderson, you got, or Louis Anderson, you got Trevor Noah, um, En Vogue, pa Salt and Peppa, um, Gladys Knight, J Colin Jost, John Legend, and the over, singing the le the theme song, and singing the presenting song at the very, very end of the, or in the middle of the credits when he sings the presenting song for the first, uh, movie with the queen coming, or with the princess coming down the, um, hall 
does a great job. She, he really, he <laughs> has a great voice, and I love the fact that he was part of it, and I love the fact that all these people were part of it, because it made it seem like it was more, less, they are not taking themselves too seriously. It was just meant to be fun. Um, I know some people were getting upset because they were like, oh my god, it wasn't really funny at all. It was stupid. It was stupid. It was a waste of time. It was not a waste of time. I don't think it was a waste of time. I had a good time. I think it's about time we have song, I have, we have movies that are not looking to send you a deep, deep message, and there's not, it doesn't need to be super shock value, and it wasn't. It just, it just cruised throughout the whole time. It was so nice. I love, we need more funny stuff. Just funny for funny's sake. You know, we need more movies like that, and I'm glad that this one showed that. Um, I give this, this, um, movie a... I give it a 4 out of 5, only docking it down because of the kind of tropes that kind of repeated in the fir from the first one. But other than that, that's all, that's most, that's the only thing of how my complaint I had from it. Um, it was just a really good job. It did a, they did a really good job of keeping it light and fun, and I was really excited to see it. Um, leave a comment below, tell me what you thought. If you liked it, if you didn't like it, um, let me know. And don't forget to, if you like this video, hit this like button, the subscribe button, and the notification bell so you get more of my videos. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video.